Welcome to the Microfinance Podcast. Listen to inspiring interviews and take a look at the tools and products that are used in the field. The Microfinance Podcast is produced by Microsafe, market-led solutions for financial services, and is brought to you by Moving Planet Films. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Well, I didn't think that there's such a big audience here. <laughs> and I thought everybody is busy in this town doing the bailout package. <laughs> they won't have time to come here. <laughs> I had a good day today. I spent the whole day today here, starting out with a good meeting with the Fed Chairman Bernanke. I was doing that to kind of update him, update him about the work that we have been doing in this country. This is my second visit with him. I met him uh, in October 2007. And at that time, I was trying to explain to him the importance of microcredit in the USA. And he knew all about microcredit beforehand. And I was suggesting that maybe we should start a microcredit program in this country to create a kind of a prototype which can be developed and expanded later on. And he was all, gave all the support. He said, go right ahead and we'll have any support we need from us, we'll give it to you. And I was talking about giving us a legal home so that we can use that legal home to create that organization. Because for microcredit, it's very important that we have the legal facility to take deposits. If we can take deposits, then it becomes easy to lend money because you don't have to go out to raise funds for that. It becomes a complete business. And he promised that he will help us to find the right kind of legal structure so that we can do that. So in the meantime, we went ahead and started a program in New York City, in Jackson Heights, in Queens, last January. And it started off very well. I remember one journalist asking me, why did you choose New York City to do your Grameen microcredit program here instead of going to villages or rural areas of USA? Because in Bangladesh, you do the villages, not the cities. So my answer was, we deliberately chose New York City and Jackson Heights. We chose New York City because New York City is the world capital of banking. And the city does the banking to the whole world, but it doesn't do banking to its neighbors. So I said, under the shadow of the skyscrapers, those people who live here, they don't have access to the financial service. So we thought we could create a small example to break your fear so that banks can open up and they get the service. And we began. Now, one year later, we have 500 borrowers in that program, all women. And we follow the same principles that we do in Bangladesh. Five women forming a group, weekly meeting, tiny savings for each, savings account for each person. And the average loan size is $2,200. And this, within one year, now, repayment has always remained near 100%. It's 99.3%. We didn't realize at that time that there's a big financial crisis will come over. And Now it gives a very interesting contrast. It is the women in New York taking loans without collateral, 
without any lawyers, pay back every week near 100%. And for one year, they have been doing it and had no problem. It's the big banks <laughs> having all the problems. They can't get their money back. So I remember my first encounter with bank when I started this in Bangladesh back in 1976. When I tried to propose, I proposed to the bank manager next to the, uh, the village that I was trying to bring financial service to the poor people in that village. When I proposed it to the bank manager, he was repeatedly arguing to convince me the bank cannot lend money to the poor people because they're not credit worthy. And I was challenging it. I didn't know anything about it because I never did it. Banking was never my business or even my academic subject. But he would not give up. Now I think it's a good time to ask a question. Who is credit worthy? The deepest crisis is also an exciting time because this is an exciting opportunity to create new. Poverty is an artificial imposition on human being. Why can't we create another kind of business? Business which will aim at completely at others. In a social business yoga company like Grameen Danone, you'll be asking how many children got out of malnutrition this year. Fun of doing this, you overcome the impossible. And if you have designed and you have succeeded in getting 100 people out of welfare, then you have developed a miracle seed. You can take out millions of people out of welfare by planting this seed 